Oh. You'll have to excuse me. I'm doing spring cleaning. I'm doing spring cleaning. I'm doing spring cleaning. So you're going to have to just watch this. Oh, it's about how um, it's morally okay and fun to steal AI art. Although from a certain perspective, it's sort of impossible to do. So yes, excuse me. Today's subject is coming to you thanks in no small part to my delightfully delicious co-editing collaborator Z Manzilla, who shared with me an amazing graphic from an AI-loving techno simp that had been shared to social media utterly without irony. Given the source, you can already guarantee the text contained within this JPEG is equal parts hilarious, pitiful, and infuriatingly fucking arrogant. And that's me talking. Which is really the best part of online AI zealots, no matter how hilarious hilariously, arrogantly pitiful I am, there'll always be a snivelling plagiarism advocate who paid for Twitter what I can kick down at. This graphic reflects arguments I've seen before, ones that have never ceased to amaze me in how entitled, self-aggrandizing, and just plain fucking ignorant they are. And again, that's me talking. The general thrust of this obtuse drivel supposes that AI-generated content is not only as creatively valid as genuine art created by genuine artists, it takes just as much effort, skill, experience, and raw talent to make. Oh yes, that's actually, seriously, what these people want you to think. That typing a few keywords into a text bar and right-clicking the results is the same thing as studying an art form for years, mastering an art form, or taking raw materials and transforming them into something with meaning. Doing those things Neil Buchanan used to do on Art Attack, where he'd put little bits of shit on the floor and then the camera would pull back and it turned out he was making a picture of a dog or a bucket or something. This is an art attack. This is an art attack. This is art attack. <laughs> And amazingly, despite the fact all their art has been algorithmically generated by harvesting and reconstituting existing media without permission like tyranids, these philosophically offensive frauds have the mind-blowing fucking nerve to cry about AI artwork being stolen. That's the thing being whined about in that there image, and it's absurd. Claims of theft are just a roundabout and more wrong way of trying to steal validity. In their nursery rhyme world of dancing frogs and lemonade rivers, AI generated can be plagiarised because the self-styled creator is putting in just as much creative effort as anyone else. It's stunningly pig-headed. To claim AI art is just as good as real art, which they also do, is audacious enough. But to go beyond an argument of subjective taste and attempt to equate what these natists do to what artists do is so demonstrably, so comprehensively false as to step into the realm of the delusional. I probably won't try and make Natist a thing. But I'll come up with something to differentiate these sub-hack grade swindlers from artists, because simply calling them cunts is a bit too general. Hello there, and welcome once again to Art Attack, the big art show. Artistic incels. Since so much of their gleefully expressed contempt for real art stems from resentment over an inability to create their own. Very much alike those involuntary celibates, they're jealous as fuck over something they can't do, and rather than reflect on whether or not they could put in the work to help themselves, they take the easier route of attempting to drag everyone down to their spiteful level. Generative AI is to tech bros what sex bots are to incels, a prophesied replacement of the thing that makes their dicks feel tiny. Cross, that was some good rhetoric right there. Nailing it. Anyway, what I thought would be a bit of a chuckle today, what I thought would be a good laugh, would be if we went over this JPEG-bound monument to the Dunning-Kruger effect and, you know, just kick the shit out of it. Is it easy? Yes. Is it low-hanging fruit? Yes. Am I going to defend that? Nah. That's what it is. And I simply don't care. Before you steal AI-generated images, realise that is how it starts, complete with two rogue exclamation marks flagging the warning with utmost urgency and emphatic yellow-black caution stripes denoting unequivocal, serious business. What follows is a list of thoroughly vacant arguments that I'm going to enjoy dining on piece by piece for the next several minutes. So, let's get going. A prompt was not created within 10 seconds. Skeleton feathers. 
Elmer Fudd's Findom videos. GameCube destroying Victorian London like a Martian tripod. He can make a prompt in 10 seconds. Tall. But seriously, what I love about this is how much it equates sitting and thinking with creating. Now look, thinking about what you want your art to be is absolutely part of the process. But if that means you've made something, that makes me the writer of several novels, a movie director, and capable of pulling off a 450 Phoenix splash. You know, because I've thought about doing it. That means it took just as much work, right? Fucking dumb argument. Thinking and doing are different things. I'm not saying you have to be successful, published, prolific, or anything like that. Hell, you don't even have to be good. But you have to do the thing you've said you've done, otherwise you haven't done it. If you've never written a single word about sports, you can't claim to be a sports writer. If you haven't so much as opened a tin of paint in your life, you can't claim to be a painter. You know, like how I'm not gonna fucking claim to be a pilot or a sous chef. Besides friggin' which, it's not about how long you spend thinking thinking about it, but how hard you think while you're thinking. Some writers will make extensive notes before they start writing. Others will simply launch into it going from one word to the other spontaneously. Others will indeed take a while to think things through, but if they're, say, writing a work of fiction, that thought will inevitably include world building, history, character relationships, as well as the general premise and plot beats. Telling a good story isn't coming up with prompts. You don't just stop at the elevator pitch and call yourself a movie maker. And it's the fundamental difference between how normal people think and how tech bros think. They think something taking a long time equals something taking effort. They are ideas people and have no clue how much work it takes to turn an idea into something. Like anything. Generating for the right result can take hours! Like I said, these people think taking a long time and doing a lot of work are the same thing. I've seen some idle fucking wankers turn a five minute job into an hour long one before, and it wasn't because they were working hard. Or even sober. Aside from the fact that they don't seem to know what real work looks like, I reckon another reason for this false conflation is that to a lazy, self-entitled, impatient tech bro brain, having to wait for anything more than five minutes instead of having everything they want that second for as little investment as possible really is one of the most difficult things they've ever been expected to do. Even raising their arm for the handout makes them sleepy. Genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. It's one of the most famous sayings of our time though probably not heard often in Silicon Valley. It's a mantra I've always tried to keep in mind, that simply being inspired means nothing if you don't sweat to realise it. I understand all too well what executive dysfunction looks like. Starting a task can be really difficult sometimes, but all that time spent doing nothing is literally the opposite of time spent doing something. Also, exposing the fact AI is such a scatter shoe, it can take hours to get the desired result, is not the great defence you think it is. First, it shows just how little control you, as the supposed creator, have over the creative process, that your role in it is largely relegated to rolling a dice. Most artists, when they make something, can pretty much make what they set out to make. Doesn't always go right, but a lot of artists, it turns out, are quite good at realising their artistic vision. Often, by having the one-to-one -one finesse required to keep shaping something as they build it from scratch. Not mass produce a bunch of shit graphics before randomly fucking around with one of them until it looks half decent. I could spend hours pressing the randomization button in Dark Souls. So where are me Damien Hurst millions? And when you're making something and you have actual fucking talent, you can actually do certain things really quickly. Again, there's false conflation here. Taking ages and doing well aren't the same. Bob Ross never had to spend hours getting the right result. He would turn a mistaken brushstroke into a happy little tree in, well, 10 seconds. He had that experience, he had that talent. It's all about context. But as that's come out of my mouth, I just realised context has no place in this conversation because anything to do with AI is completely devoid of an understanding of the concept. Some makers pay for using generators. Yeah, and some people pay for stolen radios. It doesn't make them the legal owner. Let me put it this way. If you bought a coffee maker, and you stole my coffee to use it, Craig. That's still my fucking coffee. Craig. Oh, but my coffee maker was so expensive and I spent hours deciding which flavour to steal. Doesn't fucking wash, mate. You can pay as much for generators as you cocking well please. But the generators didn't pay for all the appropriated art they run on. If you're not convinced, allow me to buy you a pencil and claim credit for everything you draw. Wait a minute. No. 
Not the racist shit, not the racist I really don't give a shit whether you paid for something or not. AI advocates have spent the past couple years now laughing at real artists and their struggles, celebrating the idea that AI is threatening their livelihoods, actively expressing disgust at the fact artists dare to charge for their art rather than work for free. Sorry, why are they bringing money into this? Y'all didn't want to pay for the art before. Not paying for art has been one of generative AI's most popular benefits. So why the fuck do you think your financial decisions have any relevance here? I've had to hear AI zealots refer to art as worthless for years. Something that doesn't even create original art should be even further away from the discussion of money. The court rules your purchase receipts inadmissible and advises that your anus may be a more suitable receptacle. Some creativity and vocabulary are required. Bullshit. Some creativity and vocabulary can be involved, I'll go that far, but there sure is shit not required. Have you seen what most of these nerds do with the power of generative AI at their fingertips? They produce just the most derivative fucking shit because they don't actually have any original ideas of their own. And nor does the AI because it's all literally derived from existing content. So they just use AI to make the most generic and appropriative sci-fi and fantasy shit, copying existing artists' styles because video games and anime is about all they consume. Either that or they just do fan art. I do love how this particular argument hedges its bets though. It doesn't go so far as to say that you must be a creative or eloquent person or that you like need a lot of creativity. No, you just need some measure of it. Just so long as you can have a human thought in your head and know a few words. Which is true, that is all you need to create art I suppose. Might not be particularly good but art is art. Nevertheless the way they put it is brilliantly understood. And taken in the context I've decided to take it in, it's probably the truest thing an AI advocate's ever suggested. I'm saying they're mediocre. Again though, this just demonstrates perfectly the mindset on display. It's not about putting in the graft, it's not about getting your hands dirty or even just active. It's only ever about having ideas. The 1% inspiration, which isn't even inspired, unless you equate plagiarism with inspiration, which these fuckers definitely do. These people find the concept of being creative more important than the act of creating. And bugger if that isn't how it always goes in the tech world. A bunch of mundane pedestrian grifters producing nothing of their own, but still finding ways to profit off a product. To deliver quality, you cannot master this in one day. Who's delivering? Not you. You're the recipient, the fucking generators run in the deliveries. Besides which, this particular argument is about as unoriginal and repurposed as the generic cyberpunk vistas these fuckers love so much. What's funny is, because I am indeed one of those writers that just fucking go for it rather than plan out too much ahead, I didn't realise at first exactly how much this graphic would prove my point about AI bros and their inability to tell the difference between doing work and doing Fuck all. Once again, it just comes down to time for them. Not skill, not talent, not experience, not training. Nothing about actual expression or meaning or literary significance. Because such notions have no value in a world that values NFTs. Took me a really long time to have a shit yesterday and that wasn't a masterpiece. It only sold for $15,000. We don't make tangible things with our hands, but that doesn't mean no effort was made. This is the closing sentiment, and I think the most notable aspect of it is it's the first time the word effort's been uttered once in the graphic. Point after point about how long everything takes and how much money it costs, and only in the final sentence with absolutely no qualification or expansion does our intrepid corpo thrall dare to try and get away with it. At no point however has it ever been explained how any of this takes effort. All they explained, all they ever explain is how much time, money and words it takes. Because they don't got anything else. Compare it to my response where I focused on how much effort real creation takes immediately. I was able to do this because I can point to examples and I can explain the difference. Something AI bros will never be able to satisfactorily do. That is why alleged theft of generative AI's forgeries is perfectly morally okay. And in exactly the same way I've argued how you can't steal from corporations, I can righteously, vindictively say, you can't steal AI artwork, it's called reclamation.
Hello, Z-Man Zilla here. My name was conjured at the top of the video, so I figured I'd take a brief opportunity to clarify my own stance on AIR. By and large, I agree with Steph, but let me share what really rattles my yam dingers about AI prompt jockeys. In the book Galapagos, Kurt Vonnegut wrote how certain types of people will invent gadgets to extract and exploit the unique and useful traits of others for no other reason than to access those traits without having to so much as thank another person. In other words, they might talk a big game about making art easier or quicker or more accessible, but the only problem they're really solving is their problem, the one where they have to acknowledge the human contribution of others. But there's an optimistic way I choose to look at all this. When I say AI art gizmos are taking jobs from artists, I prefer to think they don't mean the doodling or the coloring or all that. Nah, those are the labors of love. Instead, I think that AI is taking the jobs handed out by fussy, self-important dingbats. You know the kind. The kind that always have endless revisions, fussy changes, unnecessary micromanagement, and a complete lack of collaboration skills. The ones begrudgingly given out by type A dorks that act like their time is infinitely more valuable than mine. I think that if you told me you were inventing a machine that would distract these Anish Kapoor wannabes, and all you needed was some art to train it with, heck, I might have donated some. And I have peers that would as well. The fact that most scraped artists were never even looped into the decision-making process and are being told how to feel about it after the fact should tell you everything you need Need to know about the skeleton warriors. The skeleton warriors who invented it. With that said, I'm gonna wrap this up so I can go play some more Valheim. If you want to see my actual art made by actual me, check out my website, pandangit.com, or look for Sesamero on TikTok. Be sure to thank God for Steph and thank you for your time. I've actually started hoovering for real. Thank God for OCD. You know, it's fucking horrible.